bold. Can we just eat one? That's bold. Smooth and crunchy Butterfinger peanut butter cups. Bolder than bold. Ang nag-iisang Filipino FM station sa Honolulu, 96.7 FM KPHI. The following paid programming does not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of the staff and management at KPHI and HOYE Media. You are now listening to The Legal Pinoy with attorney Rhoda Yabes Alvarez, a show covering legal issues facing Filipino Americans today. Listen and learn about U.S. and Philippine law. The information highlighted in The Legal Pinoy is for informational purposes only and does not constitute legal advice. There is no attorney-client relationship established during the show. Here now is attorney Rhoda Yabes Alvarez. Hello, attorney. Good morning. Good, Good morning, a- Alan. Good afternoon then. Good afternoon then. Depende, nukay nga dingdingig ka dito yung programa, Apo. Well, once again, it's, um, I have to say, it's another Aloha Friday, Alan, because we're broadcasting live, 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 live yes, from the, do- the heart of downtown Honolulu. Well, pwede rin Aloha Monday, attorney, kasi mapapakinggan to ng mga listeners Oo, nyo sa... Hindi lang sa Friday, but sa Monday as well. Okay, so aloha everyday tayo dito aloha sa every... Hawaii. <laughs> Very good attorney. Nung no, maawatan nyo dito nga broadcast, Apo, kita mo yung uh, dito iti legal program. Legal Pinoy is the legal program that addresses the intertwine of Philippine law, U.S. immigration law, and Hawaii state law as it affects that unique Filipino-American experience that we share. And uh, the clue. The clue, Alan. The clue, attorney. That, that they they understand mm-hmm. our broadcast is because we broadcast iti aglalaok nga, Tagalog, Ilocano, and English. Mm-hmm. So, nung maawatan nyo dito yung Apo, that means we share a common history coming from one island paradise, no other than our beloved motherland, the Philippines, and finding each other again in yet another island paradise, no less than the beautiful state of Hawaii. Katan lata nga may katapo that even as we journey between two island paradise, that every now and then, katadalata ti ma-encounter tayo nga matawtawag nga trouble in paradise. The good news is, if that's legal trouble, is there's a corresponding legal solution. That is the theme and continuing advocacy of our program, Apo. This is Legal Pinoy. Kadagdingdingig kayo, kanyak, ti host you, Apo. Roda Yabes Alvarez, abogado dyan, Pilipinas, kan dito yung Estados Unidos, ti particular nga Estados, kat Hawaii and New York. And uh, always joining me is my better half and... Uh, the host of the um, noontime show, Midday, Midday with Alan, Alan Alvarez. Hello, attorney. Kamusta po kayo? Okay, so let's start. Yes, attorney. But, um, you know, Alan, many things have happened again uh, this past week. So from the past week that we broadcasted, but, uh, ag- 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 recap tayo. let's do a, a recapitulation of what we had discussed last week for those nga sumubsubaybay it legal Pinoy last week. But, uh, you know that we were giving a fair warning, Alan, for those who might have been receiving calls from fake IRS um, officers. Mm-hmm. Ang dami palang tinatawagan ng mga fake IRS officers kasi may mga nakausap ako. And I want to do a, a shout out, Alan, to our friends in Waipahu, Manong Loreto Viloria. Shout out sa inyo, Manong. Yes, yes, and his friends. Mm-hmm. Kamusta kay amin dito, Waipahu, Apo? Anyway, so what's happening is uh, maraming tinatawagan ang fake IRS officers with an Indian accent. So akala nung mga natatawagan na totoong uh, um, IRS agent yun kasi marami sa marami nagtatrabaho sa immigration at sa IRS na may Indi- Indian accent. Mm-hmm. And that's Indian accent from India. Totoo yan, attorney. So uh, maraming nabibiktima. And again, we describe the scam. They will call you and they will tell you that you owe a certain sum of money from uh, uh, from IRS because you misfiled your taxes or you made a mistake and uh, or you did not declare your full income and therefore you are in danger of deportation, arrest, or losing your license. Kat amin na ito yung kumapaspasamak in that phone call. And some people, um, they are caught... Uh, back and nasha sila so they do not remember anymore that anything that you should receive from the IRS must be in writing and therefore no adati tawag na kasjay kas it's a scam because that person is trying to 
squeeze or extort money from you. So it's um it's an extortion through force, fear, or fraud. Oh, oh. Mm-hmm. ngayon sabi natin last week na the reason why people are are affected and they are inclined to act on this uh, uh, extortion is because siguro hindi tama yung pagka-prepare ng taxes nila kasi hindi nila dinala sa professionals they did it on their own or hindi nila declare yung taxes nilang lahat may cash money sila hindi nila na declare or kung ano man yung problem na na tinatago nila o uh, pagkakamali na hindi nila naiintindihan at nadadaan sila sa takot nadadala sila sa pananakot, nagbabayad sila. So, based on an article um, on the internet, Alan, this has been going on since 2014. And hanggang ngayon, it's 2016, marami pa rin na-victimize. And then, in the IRS website itself, nakalagay na doon yung warning about this kind of scam. And so, last week, we tried to remind our kababayans not to fall for this scam. And the way that you will... The way na hindi po kayo matatakot sa ginagawa nyo is if you do things legally and if you do things properly. Kasi kahit na anong pananakot ang gawin sa'yo, kung alam mo namang wala kang ginawang masama, hindi ka madadala ng scam or hindi ka, uh, these people cannot prevail over you. So marami nang nakolekta itong mga taong to according to the article that I read, uh, more than a million US dollars na wow. ang nakukotong nila wow. by trying to extract 5,000 to 3,000 to 2,000 from these people whom they call and then who are instructed to make an immediate deposit right away mm-hmm. to an account. Mm-hmm. So, kung kaya nga, do not fall victim to this uh, scam apo. This is a reminder because sometimes you've read the news, you've heard it on the radio, and you've actually watched it on, on TV. But if you get that phone call, kat awan ti presence of mind you, what happens is baka they can prevail on you. So, again, in the Philippines, we call this kotong. Kotong, attorney. Nangungotong. Mm-hmm. Okay. Normally, pag sinabing kotong dati, alam nyo, sa jeep yan eh, pag nakapila yung mga jeep, tapos sa uh, gusto mo pumila or nagkat ka sa pila, may mga hihingi sa'yo dun eh, nangungotong na protection money. Hindi ba manloloko ang tawag dyan, attorney? Oo nga, pero may specific term siya, <laughs> kotong. <laughs> Hindi lang, marami kasing form ng panloloko. Meron din yung tinatawag na, ano ba yung narinig mo na ba yung budol-budol gang? Budol-budol gang, narinig ko na yun. Sa Philippines din yan. Mm-hmm. So, tatawagan ka, tatakutin ka. Mm-hmm. O kaya, sasabihin na mananalo ka ng pera, na magkita tayo sa isang lugar. Kung ano man, meron nangyayari. Mm-hmm. They, they prevail upon people who should uh, be more circumspect and aware na, na medyo sila nga ay niloloko. Pero sa masamang, sa masamang ano, kapalaran nga ay nagpapaloko kasi hindi sila nakakaisip ng tama o may pinagtatakpan sila kaya sila ay naloloko. Pero yung attorney, kasi minsan tatawag yung mga yun na, na, nasa gitna ng meron kang ginagawa or busy busy ka, dun sila tatawag. So hindi mo hindi mo naiisip tuloy kung tama ba yung tax filing ko or ano, they, they catch you at inopportune moments, attorney. Hindi lang yun. Basta pagka may ganyan kasi merong uh, Um, they are very skilled in trying to work this uh, this way. So, maraming... Pagka-scammer ka, magaling kang mag, uh, mag-scam. Hey, scammer Meron ka. kang uh, skill set na nakakapanloko ka. <laughs> Ang defense ng mga tao dyan, dapat huwag magpaloko. Kasi pag napaloko ka, minsan ikaw pa ang nahihiya magsabi na ako'y naloko. Mm-hmm. So, for example, yung sinasabi natin, we also describe the circun- certain circumstances na, na nadidiscover natin na, kunyari, yung immigration. Mm-hmm. Maraming immigration scams din. So, what happens is, uh, they entice people na matutulungan namin kayo, ganito, ganyan. And then, these people naman, uh, magbabayad. Pero, ang nangyari, yung nilapitan nila, hindi pala sila matutulungan. So, naghintay ng tatlong taon, limang taon, isa, sampung taon, wala palang na-file, pero nakapagbayad siya. Tapos, ang pagtinanong mo, sino ba kasing nilapitan mo? Kung may opisina yon di puntahan mo sa opisina. Ang sasabihin, wala namang opisina, o kaya kakilala lang, o kaya nandun sa opisina, pero wala na ngayon, dahil uh, hindi naman pala talagang opisina yon uh, Permanent hindi permanent o kaya fly by night o kung ano man ito ang mga 
you know, pag walang opisina, bakit ka magbabayad ng $3,000 o $4,000? At kung kahit na may opisina, kung hindi naman opisina yon na dapat tumulong sa ganong pamamaraan, it doesn't match. Mm-hmm. So, pagka ganun, uh, you fall victim to a scam or to uh, fraud. But the, the point is, ikaw pa ang nahihiya na i-call out yung scammer. Kasi mapapahiya ka that how could you fall victim to a scam? And alam mo naman, alam mo naman din na yung binayaran mo is not an attorney or hindi marunong dun sa ginagawa niya. And maraming, maraming professionals are affected eh. Yung iba pupunta sa uh, hindi naman doktor, may infection Kung ano man yun, sa pampabuti, let's just say na ganyan, hindi regulated kasi uh, hindi naman practitioner dito pero nagpa-practice dito. For example, or tax preparer pero hindi naman na... Uh, Uh, yata pala qualified. So, imbes na matulungan ka na mag-file ng taxes, ang nangyari, ikaw ay na-audit pa at wala kang kopya ng documentation mo. So, ngayon, you want to defend yourself, wala kang kopya, hindi mo na rin mahagilap yung tao dahil wala kang opisina, pero doon ka nagpatulong. So, pagka ganun, sino ba ang masisisi mo? Well, partly, dapat masisi mo rin yung sarili mo. Pero hindi yan excuse for those who do this kasi nga, you just have to be aware. And part of our advocacy is to make people aware na pag magpapatulong, magpatulong sa nakakaalam. Okay, Alan. So, uh, when we return, we return uh-huh. after our short break, uh-huh. we will discuss itong article that came out in the newspaper yesterday about the fishermen who uh, provide yung mga kinakain natin, Alan, sa, sa mga restaurants dito na f- fresh freshly caught fish. Oo, but unfortunately, yung circumstances ng mga fishermen ay hindi masyadong maganda. So that was in an article yesterday and when we return after a short break, we'll discuss that topic. Pagsubli apo, Tiligal Pinoy, don't go away, we'll be right back. Katatapos lang ni Attorney Roda Yabes Alvarez na konsultahin ang kliyente ng uh, uh, para sa si imigrasyon. Ma'am, uh, how do you feel na natulungan kayo ni Attorney Roda? Oh, so much thank you. So much thank you because I passed. Kano kalaki ba yung tulong ni attorney na naibigay sa inyo, Manang? Tinulongan ako ng todo. Sa mga nakikinig na Ilocano, Manang, anong masasabi mo sa kanila kung nangangailangan sila ng tulong? Oh, daytipatak nga Ilocano. Mm, no, kaya tiyoti agaplikar nga American citizen. Mapan kayo laing kin ni Atty. Roda Yabes ta isot ti makatulog, ta alis to ti processing na. So tingin nyo ba ma'am na naalalayan kayong maigi at uh, uh, kampanti po kayo na si attorney ang tumutulong sa inyo? Opo sir, yeah, siya ang tumutulong talaga sa akin. Uh, palagi ako sa office niya. Lahat ng mga problema ko, kahit personal ko na may, may bagakpay kayong kwa na. <laughs> ano masasabi mo man ang, sa mga nag, uh, naghahanap ng tulong dyan, nangangailangan ng tulong, uh, those who are looking for uh, legal help, uh, ma'am, anong masasabi mo sa kanila? Ang masasabi ko sa kanila, talagang siya ang talagang makakatulong sa inyo, uh, lalo na sa uh, mga legal matters and immigration matters talaga nga makatulong iso na talaga nga iso tinakatulong kanya pati ang mo kun ket ti ang mo ket uh, mabayag nga maan gaya nagalis to ti processing na ano pakiramdam niyo ngayon man ang natapos na lahat at uh, naayos na ang kailangan ayusin sa kaso niyo i'm so very much happy can I, i'm so proud of uh, being future American citizen. Can thank you so much for Attorney Rod, Roda Yabes. Nung kasapulan nyo, iti mapagtalkan ken si dadaan nga abogado, tawagan nyo lang ni Attorney Roda Yabes Alvarez. No ti problema yo ket may panggep, imigrasyon, pamilya, divorce, adoption, child support, negosyo, wino problema ijay Pilipinas, tawagan nyo itong numero 808-589-7380. Kung nangangailangan kayo ng abogado na maaasahan at handang tumulong sa inyo, tawagan si Attorney Roda Yabes Alvarez. Shock ni Attorney Roda Yabes Alvarez. Makaawatak ti Ilocano, Tagalog, Kin English. Libre ang unang konsultasyon, kaya tawag na sa 808-589-7380. Attorney Roda Yavis Alvarez. Okay, Attorney, we're back. Yes, we're back, Apo. 
Okay, before the break, we said we'll discuss yung newspaper article kahapon, Alan. But I forgot na meron pala tayong good news that we want to share yes, to our listeners. Mm-hmm. Well, malagip yung apo, nga ibagbaga tayo nga merong, we were sharing the information that, you know, meron ng parol para doon sa mga napetisyonan ng mga World War II veterans, Alan. Meron ang tinatawag na World War II veterans parol, policy, and program at uh, kahit na wala pa yung kanilang mga immigrant visas dahil nga matagal magpetition pag ikaw ay nagpepetition ng married children binigyan ng sila ng remedyo na pwede silang mag-apply ng parole para makapasok itong mga napetisyonan at magintay na lang ng visa nila dito sa Amerika so marami na po tayong natulungan and we're we're happy to announce na meron tayong tatlong pamilya alan na na, na approve na as of yesterday, yung kanilang applications. Mm-hmm. So, hindi magtatagal makapapasok na silang uh, pamipamilya dito sa Estados Unidos. So, um, dito yung proseso, Apo, Kat Barbaro, and what we want to do is to share the information. Kanya yun, no, dagito yung veteranos, if you are if you are a World War II veteran and you're listening, well, no, if you're uh, the descendant or family member of the World War II veteran, kagdingdingig kayo, kat, there is a program and there's an information drive nga pakaam mo. Tano, dag ito yung uh, veteranos, kat maamuan dan, uh, nga ada ti remedyo nga na, na itad para kenkwada, especially for them, para makapasok itong family members nila earlier and wait for their immigrant visas here. And we ha- we're happy to share na itong process na ginawa natin, Alan, ang approval dates uh, from the time we sent it that to the time that they received it to the time that they approved it is four weeks. Four weeks, yes, attorney? Yes, four weeks. Naman, attorney. Four weeks kasi pag walang mali. Mm-hmm. Ayun. Mm-hmm. O kaya, mm-hmm. um, yun nga, pagka maganda yung pagka-prepare. So, ano nangyayari? Magtatagal lang yan ng additional week, Alan, because mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. magpapadala sila ng notice from the mainland to here. Mm-hmm. So, add an additional week or two. Ayun. But ang maganda, do, based on the time that they received it, up to the date that they approved it, na, kasi tinignan ko kung matagal talaga eh. Sabi nila kasi six months up to 6 months. So, itong ginawa natin, umabot siya ng 1 month. That's so, great, I- I'm very happy na mm-hmm. ganyan ang resulta and hopefully, marami pa tayong matulungan. Ayan. So, kailangan, kasi, applyan itong mga do- itong mga remedyong to hindi sila automatic. So, dahil taapot, i- kaya tingnan, ibunong nga impormasyon, mabalin nga makasrak, dag ito'y napetisyonan, nga nasapsapa, apu, nga mahan nga automatic, dag ito'y masapul nga apl- aplikaran, dag ito'y nga remedyo, kan, uh, masapul nga nung agapply kat kumpleto dagi requirements kan uh, kan maipasa dagi to'y uh, beneficiaries di ay uh, interview da ta, nung makasirk da nga uh, nasapsapa okay so now going back to that article Alan that we're talking about um, marami kasi may alam nito eh mm. pero marami ding may hindi alam mm. Pero yung mga may alam, sabi nga nila, they turn a blind eye to it. Mm-hmm. And what is this um, situation? Adu iti fishermen apo nga nagaputi sa basabali nga nasyon and they are happened to be working. Uh, dito'y, dito'y... Um, uh, sa harbor. Yeah, they were working. Um, dito'y... Um, Lumalaot. Yeah, sila yung lumalaot to catch fish para mayroong fresh fish na serve sa mga... Uh, best restaurants and resorts and hotels dito sa Waikiki Alan at saka dito sa atin na may gustong fresh fish. Ang ang point of uh, issue lang at saka discussion dito ay ito pa lang mga fishermen na ito ay hindi man lang makatuntong outside the pier to the rest of uh, Oahu or Honolulu or the United States because wala pala silang visa. So, although they provide the fish that you eat or the, that you order on special occasions, kasi mahal nga, ang sad to say, itong mga nagtrabaho para makuha yon, Alan, they're not even allowed to step into the United States because they're here without a visa. And um, they're being paid not what should be paid under federal laws because although they are here in the territory of the United States, it's as if they're not here because they were hired at the point of hire, which is not the United States. So, nga tibag baka kapo, nag-ito'y na-recruit da, 
EJ uh, countries of origin da and uh, th- that's where they were recruited by agencies who represent the Gitoy employers here. But because there's a loophole, they're not supposed to be paid what should be paid someone who works here, who lives here, who's going to do that same job. So, Mas mahal siguro yun, attorney, kung, kung local ang hire. Ayun. So, so nangyayari, ang dis- point of discussion dito, wala daw kasing local na gustong gawin yung trabaho yun. Kaya nga, kailangan term- silang mag-recruit sa labas. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Pero pagka mm-hmm. nag-recruit ka naman sa labas, ang nangyayari, Alan, itong mga taong to, y- yung iba, they're paid $500 a month. Wow. At hindi sila pwedeng tumuntong dito. So hanggang doon lang sila sa ship at hang- hanggang sa laot at sa pier. So pagka ganun, may hindi bang tama na nangyayari dito? So you mean, attorney, they can stay on the boat or on the water, pero hindi sila pwedeng, they can't get on U.S. land? Because ganun ba yun, attorney? Technically, oo, mm-hmm. oo because mm-hmm. they don't have a US visa. Wala really? silang C or crew visa, wala rin silang B1, B2 or tourist visa or wala rin silang working visa for skilled workers. But they caught the fish that we eat every day. Yes, and they're there in the pier. Oh my God. And they can only stay on the boat, in, on the pier. Kawawa naman Ayun. So there's, there must be something wrong in that situation. However, mm-hmm. Bakit tumatagal ng ganon kung nandyan lang pala sila? Well, kasi nga, merong loophole doon sa batas mm-hmm. na hindi nagsasabi na dapat ang mga magtrabaho sa ganyan ay mga US citizen o nakatira dito. Mm-hmm. O kaya a certain percentage lang kung walang talagang US citizen or legal permanent resident na nakatira dito o local na gustong trabahuhin yan, sana may percentage no, mm-hmm. na kung ilan ang pwedeng i-hire. Well, at least give them a visa so they can... Pwede silang mag, magpasyal, attorney. Or Ang nangyari kasi, dito. pag binigyan mo sila ng visa, then they will be subject to US laws. Ouch. At pagka ganun, di ba dapat bayaran mo sila ng tama? Ang sapat, attorney. So parang nakalutang lang sila, technically, mm-hmm. figuratively, at literally. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nakalutang. Lutang yung kanilang sitwasyon. Kawawa naman, attorney. Ayun. And people take advantage of this. Kasi kung ikaw ang may-ari naman nung fishing vessel, babayaran mo $500 lang yung per tao. Mm-hmm. Eh, hindi mo kaya bayaran yung local at uh, mm-hmm. US citizen at legal permanent resident. Ganun, kasi hindi sapat yun para mamuhay sila dito. Mm-hmm. So kung ganito mm-hmm. ang sitwasyon, bakit kinakagat ito ng mga workers? Well, bakit it, ito kinakagat? Parang bait. Why do they ba- take the bait? I don't know, attorney, kasi 500 times 44 pesos, siguro mga nasa 25,000 pesos na mataas yun, attorney, sa Philippine standards. So, yun nga, minsan kasi naiinggit yung mga tao. In that article, may t- merong na-interview, bakit daw niya pinasok yung sitwasyon na yun? Hindi ba niya pwedeng kitain sa Pilipinas yung tatanggapin niya kung ganun rin lang kaliit? At napalayo pa siya sa kanyang pamilya at nakakatakot yung kanyang sitwasyon na nakatira lang siya sa ba- bapor. Hindi na no, bapor It's not even a bapor It's a vessel. It's Maliit a yun. Yeah, maliit. Hmm. So, ang, ang sabi niya, eh kasi minsan nga, yung perception mo ba na makapag-abroad ka lang o maging OFW or, you know, kumita ng dollars. Kumita ka lang ng dollars, kahit napakakaunti ng dollars, yung perception ba na nakalabas ka, mm-hmm. it's enticing to people, Alan, eh. Mm-hmm. So, itong masakit kasi nga, they are almost willing victims. Mm-hmm. If you're a willing victim, Uh, can you still be called a victim? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Kasi parang trafficking ito, di ba? Parang mod- modern day slavery eh. So parang medyo may consent ka yung sinasabi Ayun. mo. Ayun, kasi uh-huh. nga yung mga tao, na maalilaw da nga, uray, saan ka ba sit? Yung maalilaw ka, para bang sa desert, ala, nakakakita ka mirage. ng mirage na mas maganda, but there's nothing there. Mm-hmm. So pagka ganito nga, um, nakakalungkot kasi nga a lot of people fall victims to these situations. Now what are we trying to say? This exists. But because of a loophole, it appears to be legal. But if you really want ng mas magandang sitwasyon, why don't you try to find a situation that that fits you and will actually improve your life instead of putting your life in peril? So, kaunting research at kaunting paghahanda. Para pag ikaw ay lumaot o ikaw ay, you, you, you set, set sail into the... Into the, the sunset. In the outside the Philippines, mas maganda naman yung mangyari and you don't jump from the, ano bang tawag nila doon? From the frying pan. Into the fire. Into the fire. Mm-hmm. So, ayun. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. ang magandang nangyari rito, pero hindi lahat ganito ang sinapit. Yung iba, nakakuha ng T-Visa 
or trafficking visa. Oh. Ayun, kasi nga, ang nangyari, hindi nila alam na ganun pala yung conditions ng living conditions nila. Mm-hmm. And therefore, uh, nakakuha yung iba ng T-visa. Meron din tinatawag alam na, na U-visa pag ikaw ay um, naging um, victim ng crime. Mm-hmm. So, may mga visas mm-hmm. para sa mga victims. Oh, really, attorney? Mm, Kahit na pa man din sila ay willing victims. Mm-hmm. So pagka ganito, pag ikaw ay nagkamali o ikaw ay na-scam o ikaw ay naging victim ng fraud, huwag kang mahiya kasi baka naman may remedyo rin para sa iyo. Mm-hmm. Minsan kasi nahihiya sila sabihin eh Totoo yan, na na-victima sila or you know, ito rin yung mga babae na for example, tatang dadalhin dito as fiancés, mm-hmm. for example. Mm-hmm. Tapos sa uh, hindi naman pala sila papakasalan. Mm-hmm. Hindi rin naman sila Uh, baba, bibili mamahalin. Ng tic- mamahalin. At hindi sila ibibili ng ticket para makauwi. Mm-hmm. So what happens to them? Wala silang pera. Wow. So pagka ganun, they are also uh, victims of trafficking. Exploitation. And exploitation. Mm-hmm. So pag mga ganun, wala na silang sponsor, may possibility na matulungan sila. But you know, pagka ganyan, kailangan huwag kang mahiya na lumapit at magpatulong. Kasi mm-hmm. pagka ganito, na- ang nangyayari, because we are human, we are overcome by emotion and sometimes that emotion includes yung nakakahiya mm-hmm. o nakakatakot mm-hmm. or yung shock or ikaw ay napasubo mm-hmm. and uh, because of uh, maybe yung, hindi ko naman sasabihin na greed kasi wala ka namang ginustong makuha na maraming marami kung hindi yung mas mabuting buhay lang siguro kaysa sa sitwasyon mo dati. Mm-hmm. So, yun, nai-entice sila by something that they see and their perception is mas mabuti yun kaysa sa kanilang kalagayan dati. Kaya pala hindi. So, pag nadidismaya silang ganun, yung iba na depress Yung iba na babaliw. Yung iba na wawala na ng loob. So, maraming nararamdaman ang mga taong emotional. Pero pagkaganyan, kung talagang gusto mong ayusin yung sitwasyon mo, magpatulong. At magpatu- kung legal problem, magpatulong sa abogado. People think the grass is greener on the other side, attorney, and hindi totoo yun all the time. Yes, and it could be. Kaya mm-hmm. lang you have to do it the right way. Mm-hmm. So kung mm-hmm. kailangan ng research para hindi ka mapasubo, you have to do the research. Mm-hmm. And that's the reason, Alan, kung bakit tayo nagbo-broadcast at bakit natin pinapaalam sa ating mga listeners kung on what they have to watch out for. Kasi if you don't share the information, you think everyone will figure it out or everyone will know and it's not the case. So what we need to do is share the information and the good news so that people know that kahit na ganyan ang sitwasyon nila ay meron pang mga remedyo at itong mga remedyong ito ay remedyong legal. Kasi merong remedyo na hindi legal at merong remedyong legal. So kung between the two, if you're given a choice between the two, and hindi ka lang aware na merong remedyong legal, well, bakit mo naman kukunin yung illegal na remedyo kung meron namang remedyong legal? So, pag kailangan mo ng remedyong legal, kumonsulta ng abogado. Ito yung, we're not going to this discussion, pero ito yung tinatawag nilang illegal, extrajudicial, versus judicial or illegal versus legal ayun extrajudicial attorney hmm. parang si Digong yan hindi na, hindi na nga tayo pupunta <laughs> sa discussion but this is the reason why you have all those issues, uh, issues. kasi okay. there's always uh, the matter of what's the correct approach and how to do it to arrive at a, at a, at the at the best solution kasi there's different solutions to every problem and what you want to do is arrive at the best solution para hindi na mag-create ng more problems yung solution okay there are, there are many ways to skin a cat attorney or to climb a mountain yes attorney pero yung maganda ang resulta para sa iyo na hindi ka naman uh, babalikan at um, mas marami pa palang problema kasi yung parang sinabi nila ano last na to yung para bang pag may lamok tapos ang ginamit mo bazooka para patayin yung lamok. Over, mas, overkill oh, na yun. Attorney, mas no. pangit naman yun kasi mas, mas maraming problema pa yung solution kesa doon sa, sa problema. Mm-hmm. Okay. Siya ka po ni Roda Yabes Alvarez, abogado dyan Pilipinas, kan dito, Estados Unidos. Nung kasapulan nyo, tika tulungan para iti problemas, iti problemas yun. Panggepe, tilintig, makatulong kami. At dati opisina tayo dito yung Honolulu, Masarakan, EJ905, Umi Street. Sweet 206 Honolulu, Hawaii 96819. It is zip code na Jelly Code, di Jack in the Box, DJ North King. Di telepono tayo Apo para iti consultations you at 808-589-7380. 
589-7380 Apo Makatulong kami Iti problema yung panggap ti immigrasyon Pamilya, kan problema Ijay Pilipinas, kan problema matinegosyo Okay Alan, until next uh, Legal Pinoy, Diyos Tiag Nina Ti Panagdengeg, maraming salamat Sa pakikinig No kasapulan nyo, iti mapagtalkan ken si dadaan nga abogado, tawagan nyo lang ni Atty. Roda Yabes Alvarez. No ti problema yo ket may panggep, imigrasyon, pamilya, divorce, adoption, child support, negosyo, wino problema ijay Pilipinas, tawagan nyo iti numero 808-589-7380. Kung nangangailangan kayo ng abogado na maaasahan at handang tumulong sa inyo, tawagan si Atty. Roda Yabes Alvarez. Shock ni Atty. Roda Yabes Alvarez. Makaawata 